Tuesday, May 12th, 2020. So, this is day 56 of the Vegas shutdown. And you guys still, we don't have a date of when the casinos are open. They're not open right now, if you guys are wondering. They're not allowed to be open. And Governor says, like, still has not given a date. Um, so, say shit, uh, I'm sorry. Treasure Island wants to open on May 22nd. But as of now, Governor Sislek has still not said if they can open or not on that date. He has not given a date to the casinos. And I had a client the other day who was high up at the Stations Casinos, and he says Stations Casinos wants to open as soon as they're allowed. And Governor Sislek will not give them a straight answer. He said he literally, when they ask him questions, it's like gibberish from him. He doesn't answer their questions. He just says things like, oh, we're trying to figure out. We have this phase and approach, you know, just stuff like that. But we'll not even give them a date when they are allowed to open the casinos. Still, as of now. As of May 12th, he still will not give them a date. And that's all they're asking for is, can we have a date so we can plan, so we can get reservations, so we can know when the casinos can open? And he refuses. Um, this is all political, you guys. This is not over a flu virus. Because he allowed construction the entire time, and especially the Raiders Stadium, which is a football stadium. That's something that could have waited. I know that they're about to start the season, but that is not a life and death thing. Football, I don't even know if, are they, you know, they could have, if it was a deadly virus, canceled football. You know, they canceled the NBA, they canceled... So, we pressed forward for something. If it really was deadly, they would have canceled football anyways. And they were, oh, we have to get this Raiders Stadium built because that's Governor Sislek's little project, even though 16 workers that I know of tested positive. And then same with the Resort World. They had five that I know of, but there's more than that. But those were just the only ones that came out in the news. So, what's that? I work at a casino. Yeah, and you know what, people, we are just, me and Jairus were just talking about this before we got on here, is that all of these people have nowhere to go now. Like, if you were a casino worker, there is no longer casinos for you to work out. Even when they open, there's only going to be a handful, very few. There's gonna They're going to trickle open like one or two at a time. So all of those thousands and thousands of workers have nowhere to go. Their entire, like, um, job just got wiped away. Literally. They wiped away all those people's jobs. They're not like, oh, we can get a job tomorrow. No. They worked in casinos that don't exist and are not coming back. And that's like each casino housed thousands of jobs. So every casino that closes has thousands of people out of work. Dang. And they have nowhere else to go. There's no other casino. Oh, you guys going to let them come to your jobs with thousands of people? I mean, there's no, there aren't that many jobs available. The casinos gave opportunity for so many jobs and these people can't go to another state where's where else can they go do a job like they were doing also even if they wanted to do something different where's there enough for thousands and thousands of people each casino had thousands of jobs and we are going to lose so many casinos you guys they're already talking about palms is done palms is officially closed done I actually saw photos of it uh, gutted down. They've already are taking everything out of it. It's done. Um, I met with a client who was high up with Stations Casino, and Stations owns Palms. If you guys don't know that, they bought Palms. That's when they did all that chaos and all the revamp. That was with Stations. Stations owns um, Palace Station, Texas Station, Sunset Station, uh, Red Rock, Green Valley Ranch, Wild West, and a handful of other ones. Um, uh, I think the one's called Wildfire or something. Remember those yeah, ones? Wildfire. wildfire. They, uh, there's like 20 properties that Stations Casinos owns. And they, I uh, met with a guy that's high up. He He's now higher up uh, than he even used to be because his bosses were making more and they had to can his bosses. So he's like <laughs> that one of the highest now because literally if you were... The, you know, some of them executives that sit around and weren't doing anything done they had to get rid of them they can't afford it so they're like pulling back on all their staff and most of these people don't even know if they get to keep their job most of the ones at executive levels especially so this guy is executive but he wasn't making as much as his boss who just got canned so he's like I'm probably next but um They've actually been in direct contact, this guy personally, with Steve Sislek, and he says the guy is all gibberish. He says it's all political stunt. He told me, I didn't even say anything, because I, I just sit back with sort of my clients, I let them talk, and I was like, oh, he was saying everything that I've been saying, and I'm like, 
Oh, thank you. I feel like I'm finally talking to someone with a brain for the first time in a long time. He's like, yeah, this is all political. He said, first they tried. This is from what my client said, who is very important at Stations Casino. He's one of the people trying to get it back open. He's been talking directly with. So I can't say his position because then that would let people know who he is. But. Um, they might already know by what I'm saying, but I have to say because I find it interesting. But anyways, um, he said, this is all political. He said first they tried to take a Trump, and he's not even a Trump supporter or anything. He's just saying this is political. Um, that's what people think if we call it not a flu virus that we're all Trump supporters. No, we're saying that the Democrats, whether you vote Democrat or Republican, don't matter. The point is the Democrats are using this virus to take down Trump. That's the bottom line. It doesn't matter which way you vote, okay? We're not talking about voting right now. We're talking about reality of what's going on with the politics. Not voting. Or we're not saying which way to vote. What I'm saying is the Democrats are trying to take down Trump. And first, this is what directly this guy from Station Casino says, first they tried the um, Russian collusion. Remember when they were trying to say he was colluded with Russia and tried to get him that way? Then they tried to impeach him. And I guess he was impeached, but not removed. The last straw was China did this hoax. China started it, and this is what happened. Trump did a 25% tax on all Chinese products, if you guys don't remember that, just a little bit ago, like right before this virus, I'd say within the last year or something, maybe a little on time, so I forget time about that, but it was recently, because I noticed when the things went up when we'd order from eBay and Amazon, and they went up quite a bit for everything, especially little things like um, if you were to buy things like that were once a dollar are now like $7. Like, you can't get cheap little things anymore. Like, we, we used to get on eBay and people be selling things for a dollar. No, that doesn't exist anymore because there's been such an increase on the Chinese products. And people go, oh, well, we should buy American-made products. Okay, did you know that American-made things are generally bought with products from China and then they assemble it in the U.S.? So most American-made things have products from China. So when you tax the Chinese products, it actually hurts American business. But it also pisses off China. So then they did this hoax. There's always a flu virus every year, you guys. Every year we have a flu virus. All China had to do was jump on the flu virus that was already going around and say that it was deadly. That's what they did. They did on. Um, they put on gas masks and showed this crazy thing in Wuhan. And we we're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So then that's all they had to do is spread it like a wildfire on social media. And we quarantined ourselves. Okay? But get this. The Dems saw that people were getting mad at Trump. Trump was not reacting. This is back in January. And they said, ooh, we're going to jump on this opportunity to make Trump look bad. And also... You know, who cares if we uh, destroy the economy in the process, then maybe people won't want to vote Republican. And you guys think these guys don't do these things. They are willing to do anything to get the position. We see it during the campaigns. They tear each other apart. Trump 2020. You know what? I think you're right. And well, thank you. And That's like I said, I don't vote. I've never voted in my life. I was in the Air Force for four years. I still didn't vote because I do not agree with our voting system. And people go, oh, well, how's not voting going to help? I don't know. It's going to be better than continuing in a system that is completely flawed. The more people that don't vote, the more they'd have to change it. If you guys just continue, if you just say, well, I can't do anything about it, so I'll just pick the, you know, the whatever seems to be the best of the two fucking uh, retarded options, they give us really bad candidates to choose from, too. It's like, Trump or Hillary? Good Lord. Those were our options? Good night. And now what they got this year? Trump and Biden? Gee Louise. I mean, but right now... You're a genius. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Fluff my feathers. I'm just kidding. Anyways, so, um, the thing is, it doesn't even take being a genius right now, all you have to see is you have to look at that if you don't just hear what they're saying, okay? The politicians are saying this is a deadly virus, we're taking all these measures as they allow construction. Right there, from the beginning, you should have known they didn't believe it was deadly unless they literally did not care about the lives of any construction worker and all of our lives. Because if you allow construction, all those workers, which they did test positive and spread it around, uh, then could spread it to all the rest of us. That was the point of quarantining was only allowing things that were absolutely necessary, as in health care and supplies. That was all we were supposed to do. Health care, supplies, and some sort of transportation if needed, like public buses and things, you know, like that. The things that are like absolutely necessary to get around and that was it 
construction does not fall into an essential necessary thing. They put it there, but it does not in any way. You tell me when we're at the end of the world, if there really was a deadly virus, why we need to build new buildings, new stadiums, new casinos when everything's closing anyways. New houses, new apartments, new condos. We have so much stuff being built in Vegas, and they are pressing on full speed during this entire thing for all construction. And they allowed all construction for one reason. They wanted the Raiders Stadium, and they couldn't just say the Raiders Stadium because that would be too obvious. So Governor Sislek said, okay, I'll allow all construction in Nevada, which now just looks ridiculous. Why would you allow construction? But see, they wanted that Raiders Stadium, and someone had the nerve to say, oh, yesterday, oh, look at Don Webb and Tommy White, which are okay. Don Webb is the guy who's kind of the overseer for the Raiders Stadium, and he's a real bonehead. And the guy is, um, uh, he doesn't care what he has to do, what lies and trickery and stuff he has to do to get that stadium done on time. He was going to get it done on time. They've had all kinds of issues. And then Tommy White is uh, the head of the labor's union or something, and he was supposed to be on the stadium aboard, which he, like, there's a conflict there. This guy is the guy who approves the money and also, uh, like, when the... <laughs> this guy who, when the money is over budget, it's his fault, but then he's also the guy when they need the approval, it's him. So it's like... It... it it, it, you need to check some balance there. You can't have the same guy being the one overspending who's also the one allowed to approve the overspending. Do you know what I'm saying? He's the one overspending, but then he's the one giving the approval. He's in both positions. So that's messed up right there. But anyways, the Raiders saying there's been all this gunk, and they were not going to finish on time. They messed up the roof and everything, and they would not finish if they were delayed even a, a couple days due to this thing. So they said absolutely not, so they allowed them to press full speed and they are going to finish on time for an empty stadium july 31st they're finishing 2020 and we'll see if there's even in if even governor sislek allows stadiums to have people remember governor sislek is still not allowed more than 10 people to gather so you can't even have people in the stadium as of now uh so you tell me why that was essential during a crazy deadly deadly flu virus see it was not deadly you guys and your politicians knew it wasn't deadly because they allowed construction and it does not take a genius it does not take a rocket scientist does not take anyone other than someone with a brain which we all have one that we can say hmm does construction really seem essential if we were really at the end of the world like let's say we really had a, a, a virus that came in and wiped us all out like they implied do you think we needed new buildings during that process when the one the current ones we have are now vacant and are going to be sold and empty did we really need an nfl stadium if we were really going to maybe all die they already canceled NBA. We didn't even know if, the, if it really was a deadly virus, they would cancel NFL, too. But they're not, because it's not a deadly virus. But you see how you can't have both. You can't say it's a deadly virus and then allow construction. It's one or the other. It's either deadly or it's not, Governor Sislek. And it's not. And this guy is doing this all for political reasons. That's why he won't even get a, give a date to the casinos. They do not have a date they are allowed to open. They are trying to take reservations to see, to hope, and they're trying to push. And they, every day they contact Governor Sislek, and he gives them gibberish and doesn't answer their questions or just ignores them and will not give them a date. And this is according to Stations Casino, who wants to be the first casinos to open. They said as soon as they have a date, they are opening their doors. And as of two days ago, when I talked to this guy, he had not given Stations Casino or any casino a date. And now we have Treasure Island is wanting to open on the 22nd, but they don't have a date. They're not allowed to open on the 22nd. They are hoping Governor Sislek allows them to open on the 22nd. You know what I'm saying? They don't even have that officially yet. Same with Wynn wants to open on the 26th of this month, May, both those of May. But Governor Sislek has still not given approval for that as of right now. And we're on May 12th, 10 days away from when um, Treasure Island wants to open, and we still don't have approval from the governor if they can open. So what that means is... If they tried, he could bring in the police and shut them all down. And also they can't because they're gaming licenses. They'll lose their gaming licenses if they violate what the governor is doing. So it's just a mess here. And thousands of people are going to be out of work like 
thousands and thousands because each casino houses thousands. Okay, so I said Palms is done. Excalibur is probably done. Um, they, uh, they're they only planning on opening for the foreseeable future, which could be years. Um, when Encore's not opening. Uh, Venetian Palazzo's not opening. Um, they're going to open a couple of MGM properties and a couple of um, Caesars properties, which MGM and Caesars own a majority of the Strip. So most of the properties are either MGM or Caesars, which it's M Life and Caesars Rewards. Um, so MGM is planning on opening New York, New York, and uh, Bellagio. They want to open in June, but like I said, they still don't even have a date. Uh, but the rest of their properties may or may not ever open. Again, it depends. They have a couple of them that they have some maybe dates out there that'll be like September 2021 for some of them. 2021. So long time, and then Excalibur's not even on the list. It's probably not opening, and some of the junkier ones may never open again. Um, but like Aria, they're saying not till September 2021, if at all. And so when people do come back to the strip, it's going to be very sad because it's going to be like one casino open, three closed, one open. I mean, like when you walk on the strip, it's going to be like not what you want to see because normally Vegas is so lively but this is going to be so like kind of ghost townish all because um, Governor Sislik wanted to bring down Trump and that's really unfortunate that he would risk all of our lives like this and um, not over the virus over the our livelihoods now because now we're going to have so many people homeless people are already killing themselves they've had an increase in suicides because if you excuse me <clears throat> if you worked for a job for 30 or 40 years and you were maybe about to retire and you only knew that kind of work and now all of those jobs are gone and it's not like there's just another e a job that you can switch into even that's available like uh, these people probably are looking for other things but there's just not other jobs there's not thousands and thousands of jobs in other states available like they have to move out in Nevada. Nevada doesn't have anything, but even if they move to another state, there's not those thousands of jobs like the casinos housed. So now we have people um, that are going to be homeless with their families. We're three weeks behind on our rent and because we did by the week here. And luckily, you know, they can't evict yet, but we have to somehow get caught up and we don't know how because there's no there's so little money coming in. Um, I make so little right now compared to what I used to that uh, we only buy food and a minimal food I'll, I'll tell you guys what we eat in a second um water and um we do do weed still we had considered not doing it but it's for our health because we use weed as medicine and it is medicine and i tried for like two days not doing it and I, it just doesn't work for me because um i'm actually using it to recover from my 15 years of bulimia and um I was talking about this a little bit um, well, during the shutdown. See, we eat such a strict diet. We just eat all organic beef, organic collard greens and kale, and organic garlic. That's what I make for every meal. Some a version with organic beef, kale, collard greens, and garlic. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm having... I'll tell you about it. That's why I've been struggling. That's why, um, so... It's all in my chest and lungs and stuff from all the years of damage... So that's why, like, when I smoke, it helps to take it out. Because people think that coughing from weed is bad. Coughing from weed is really good. It opens the capillaries in your lungs. Coughing from cigarettes is another story because cigarettes have a bunch of additives that you might be getting other things and you might be coughing because you're... It might be, you know, messing with something. But actually, like, when you're coughing with weed, that's opening the capillaries and you're getting the medicine into your lungs. So when I smoke weed... It's actually usually not very pleasant. Like, in fact, sometimes I have to lay down right after because I start coughing for a while because it's healing me. And um, I was very, very sick for the last several years from bulimia. People don't realize that when you stop bulimia, like while you're doing bulimia, you might feel okay. Until I had to stop because my heart started to give out and I almost died. But I was very extreme my bulimia. Some people might be doing casual bulimia and you go, if you don't know what bulimia is, that's eating and throwing up. Um, I was just watching a movie yesterday called Valley Girl with Nicolas Cage. I love Nicolas Cage. Oh, my God. Nicolas Cage is like... He just does it for me. If I could fuck Nicolas Cage, 
that'd be like the dream to me and he's and now like i him older awesome anytime um he lives in Vegas. I would love to arrange that. Nicholas Cage just does it for me. So I was watching this old, old movie called Valley Girl. Where he's really young. Oh, he's so cute. But um, anyways, they were already talking about bulimia in the movie. It was interesting. It was in the 80s. And the girls, and I could tell the actresses were bulimic. Because you can tell once you've been bulimic, you can see certain characteristics of bulimics. And some of those, if you don't know what that is, is a lot of times you get puffy cheeks because when you throw up a lot and um, and right here, because it busts the capillaries uh, in your ves- blood vessels. So like a lot of times your cheeks get really puffy and right here your glands get puffy from all the throwing up. And then they often will have a big uh, a belly. Like, a, it'll be a, someone very thin, but have a belly. Like, they'll have skinny arms and legs, but they have a lot of weight in their stomach because that's where your body will store the fat when you're kind of basically starving it. Um, and then their hair gets very thin and a very hoarse voice. So my voice um, is better than it used to be. It was horrible when I was bulimic. Like, it's getting back. I could barely speak. But when you hear girls with really hoarse voices, they're probably bulimic or have been. Um, and in the movie, the girl, that it was interesting. They had the girl talk about, uh, it was in Valley Girl, you guys should check it out. It's a, it's a funny old movie. But the girl who I was saying, oh, that girl's bulimic from the start. From the, I do that now. I'll watch a movie. I say, oh, that person's bulimic. I'll say this stuff because I can tell. And... Um, then later in the movie, they had her talk about bulimia. And I was like, oh, that's funny. So, because they probably knew she was bulimic. You know, it's like sometimes they'll do that to actors or actresses. They'll make them talk about things that they know that person struggles with. It's like, it's the way sometimes the screenwriters will fuck with the actors. And so she's all, yeah, I hear about these girls doing this um, scarf and barf, and, you know, it's really bad for you, all the, all, the, all the celebs are doing it now. She said that in the movie when I'm like, that girl's bulimic. That's funny. They made her say that line. But anyways, um, so it was already being encouraged in the 80s, and that's where I heard about it is in the movies and stuff. I actually learned about bulimia by um, the celebs. You know, I read about what they were doing. I was like, oh, I would had never dawned on it because we grew up poor. You don't think about eating and throwing up food. <laughs> it just doesn't dawn on you unless you're very wealthy. Well, when I was bulimic, I was not wealthy, so I went put myself in the poor house real fast because it's an addiction I couldn't stop but I have not been bulimic for now I guess it's almost now four years because it was 2016 I, I am so weird with dates I I'm always like I thought it was three years but I was like oh we're in 2020 now so almost four years but here's the thing the way I did it was by doing all organics GMO free gluten free dairy free artificial anything free caffeine free alcohol free all we do is organic, real food. So, like, organic animal protein, organic greens, and then we do garlic. Um, now, I, that might be extreme for some, but I would recommend doing a very high-protein animal protein diet and very little greens and uh, fruit, you know, just minimal on the greens and fruit and no grains. If you want to be thin, like me and Jai Rich, because me and Jai Rich are both struggle with our weight. People think that we're just naturally thin. No, um, for one thing... There's no naturally thin, there's no genetic thing. What it is is it has to do with the way your family ate. So yes, you could be born fat because your mom or dad or um, whoever gave you the wrong food when you were a children and your mom did when she was pregnant with you. But then if you were raised by your dad, he probably was, you know, right away we're giving kids very sugary foods now, a lot of crap, all this pasta, this package, things we're giving them, caffeine at a very young age. All these things make children fatter so yes maybe you have been fat your whole life but it's not genetic what it is is you've been giving the wrong food your entire life and you've been eating the wrong food so everyone can be thin there's not this i'm i'm just prone to be fat no what's happened is the food has been so bad um that some people have been fat for like their whole generations because their generations have been eating poorly and Some of the things that you don't realize, like you might be even eating a lot of animal protein, but you're eating conventional, so it has a lot of hormones and steroids and antibiotics. Well, when they give an animal hormones and steroids, guess what? And you eat that animal or plant. If you're a vegan and you're like, oh, I don't apply to me, I eat plants. Well, they're also giving the plants hormones and steroids and then colorings to make them look a certain way, preservatives, make them last a certain amount of time. So all that, when they put it in that uh, uh, food, you digest it. So then 
when an animal or the uh, apple, for example, has steroids and hormones, you're now getting those. So even if you think you're eating healthy, you might be getting just the hormones and steroids just making you bigger. And then the other big thing is the caffeine that people don't equate as putting on weight. And most people are addicted to caffeine. And that's adding on a lot of weight. And I'll get into that in a second. And then all of the packaged and processed things, when you think you're eating something healthy, you're actually not. It's actually not good for you and it's causing more weight. So that's why people are heavier. It's not a genetic thing. And Jedi Rich lost, uh, I say it's 150. We stopped counting at 125 because we don't have a scale anymore. But I would say he's probably lost about 150 now. Because he was at 325, I want to say, when we first started weighing him, which he was probably even more than that. We started weighing him when we started deciding to get healthy. Um, and that when I was giving up my bulimia. Because, see, while I was bulimic, I allowed my husband to get very fat. He was also casually bulimic, but not as much as me. So, like, he would generally consume more, got fat. I would throw up everything, so I stayed thin. But if you'll notice, that happens with a lot of men. If the wife is bulimic, the husband will be very fat. Because sometimes the husband doesn't even know the wife is throwing up. So she's cooking all this food, eating and throwing up. Husband's eating it and not throwing up. <laughs> so you got this skinny girl, like a, a good example for celebrity couples, they're not together anymore, but um, Anna Ferris, you guys know her, she's bulimic. And while she was with Chris Pratt, she made him really fat. She even said that she does a, um, she doesn't say she's bulimic, but she's bulimic. But what she, uh, she said, oh, I just loved cooking. And she said she liked making him fat. Um, but the reality is she was cooking for herself, eating and throwing up. And then he was eating it and not throwing up or not as much. Maybe you're throwing up, but not as much. The men often won't take it to the extreme as the women, so they will end up being not as thin as the women. But another celebrity couple who is bulimic and they're both thin is Justin Bieber and Hailey Bieber. Those two are bulimic, 100%. If you guys don't believe it, you need to wake up. They're bulimic. Ariana Grande is bulimic. Miley Cyrus is bulimic. Demi Lovato goes in and out of bulimia, um, but often she just gains weight. When someone gets heavier, the probably not being as bulimic as the thinner ones but they might still throw up occasionally and it's a big thing I talk about it because it's becoming huge and it's becoming big with the younger people and they think it's okay and I did for 15 years I thought it was about I thought why isn't everyone bulimic for 15 years that's what I thought until it almost killed me and now for four years I've been having to deal with the repercussions of being bulimic all those years like it your body gets messed up and people don't realize that and they think that they can just play around with it, but it is a very, very destructive disease or disorder, whatever you want to call it. Um, because the entire time you're doing it, your body is having to now respond to the fact that you are basically not giving it the right nutrients. So it's having to build your muscles improperly, building your bones improperly. They get very brittle. You get these things called bone spurs. So what, um, I don't have them as much now because Jedi Witch has been helping me, but if you ever see women that have this super bony chest, have you seen that where the bones are popping out of their chest? I have it a little bit, but mine's gotten so much better. Um, and they like that because they think, oh, I look thin. Like Ariana Grande has that. And she shows off her bony chest. Well, what that is is actually bone spurs. What that means is you have bone growing on top of other bone because it's it's growing improperly. So, like, if, like, let's say, especially in places you had an injury while you were eating unhealthy, you don't have to just be bulimic. If you're not giving yourself the proper nutrients, then when something happens where you need to rebuild it builds improperly and it builds bone on top of bone on your nerves and it's very painful. It hurts. So what I have to do is I have to use this jade tool and I have to basically scrape my bones. It's this thing you can get them. Um, Jedi Rich, are you out there? I want to show you guys this if he's out there. I'll get it in a minute. But you can get them from Amazon. They're these little tools and they're amazing for... Let me go grab it real quick because I want to show you guys. Jedi Rich? Hold on, you guys. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. He's outside feeding the birds, I think. Feeding the pigeons. Okay, these, we have two of them. 
These are jade tools. They look like birds. They actually have a little eyeball on them. They're little birds. Um, you can get them from Amazon for, I don't know what they cost. I think they're between 10 to $13. I don't remember now. We got them so long ago. But um, what you do with these, these are amazing for any sort of muscle pain um, or any sort of pain. You scrape whatever the thing is. So if, you, if your hand's hurting, you just go like this and it's made of jade. And it scrapes. And it gets rid of pain. And where you really have pain, you dig in really deep, like if you have muscle pain. And it's amazing. Something about the jade has healing properties. I can't explain why it works so well. But so what we have to do is I have to scrape this stuff on my chest from all that years of bulimia. Uh, and Or if you eat improperly, where things healed improperly and you got these uh, bones and they hurt they hurt so bad. I have to have Jerry Rich do it sometimes because it's so painful like it's excruciating I'll be like screaming loud, like, ah! but he gets in there and um, to get that off and that's why like when he does that then all of that um, phlegm and that crap of years of uh, damage comes out and that's when I get like where I don't feel good for a minute but it's, it's a healing thing and that's what the weed helps with that so I've been doing all these things um, for years of all kinds of stuff to get rid of the bulimia and um we eat such a strict diet but I still once in a while get bloated and I was really bummed because during the shutdown um Governor Sisolak you know made it harder to get food because everyone panicked and then the stores he only allowed you to get two pounds of beef which is not enough for us so we had to eat chicken and then I've not been feeling good since then but Anyway, so I recommend getting yourself one of these if you have any kind of pain. The other thing that's really, really good for pain, if you're in a state that it's legal, is um, CBDs, uh, which are the cannabinoids from weed. And that is all just healing properties. There's no stony part in CBDs. People are worried, uh, like, oh, I'm going to get stoned with the lotion. <laughs> no, you don't get stoned with CBDs. Um, I got up, I wanted to grab the jade tool, so I wanted to show them. So oh, okay, okay, I grabbed gotcha. them. Cool. But, um, cool. but I put it back. But uh, Oh, can you grab me that um, after ActiveX? Yes. I want to show. Sure. So if you're in a state, especially Nevada, uh, that weed is legal then there's this stuff like this you guys this is insane yeah it is the best thing for pain this one is from canahemp if you live in nevada you can actually um uh, uh, you can actually order it online and they deliver it within like a day or two uh in the mail um and for free delivery you just have to be in nevada um well probably close probably not just Nevada for free delivery you probably has to be in Las Vegas for free delivery but anyway so things like this this is insane for pain and this is all you need so we do just weed so we do just like things like this like we smoke weed and then we do um, like these creams for pain we don't do any other medicine or vitamins or anything and that stuff I highly recommend it is insane so if you're in a lot of pain like let's say you have back pain neck pain joint pain arthritis anything like that put that on and it, it, it's like a it's a similar like a icy hot where it's that that, that uh, hot thing you know what they call that where it gets um, when you rub it and it gets warmer you know and it burns. You don't want to get in your eyes. <laughs> it's like that minty kind of, spearminty kind of thing. Um, but seriously, you guys, if you haven't considered weed and you're in pain and you're taking other medicine, really consider weed. And if you don't, don't have to smoke it, you can do just the CBDs. They have droplets. But that's the healing part of weed. All of weed is healing, though. So if you can do the whole thing, do it like as in smoking because the THC and the terpenes are really wonderful as well and it's all all of them have healing properties but the most healing properties are found in the cannabinoids that's why they separate those and they give that to children and stuff but everything in weed is beneficial for you you have the thc which is the, like where you get the stony aspect and then you have the terpenes which are your aromas there's like um there's over 200 something terpenes but the the flavors will be your citrus your mint your lavender your pine and did i forget one these babies would really like to see you. I just, I was out there. They, they kind of want to see you. Oh, I gotta go see my my yeah. little sweethearts. Is it? Is it? Is it's this about done? Time. It's about okay. time. All right, guys. Unless you're done, unless you're not done. I gotta yeah. go see my pigeon babies. Yeah. Do you have more to say right now? No, I think. Okay, I we'll see you guys tomorrow. Catch y'all later. Not today. I'm not impressed. I'm not.
I'm used, I'm not confused, I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business, I am not in school. Put your hand down, youngin', this is not for you. I'm a jail, my beats with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh. Like I'm still a day, yo, and it's been like that since the day, yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down and get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out. Yo.